Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 44 of Teaching Tales, the podcast totally devoted to sharing stories from the world of education, stories that will hopefully encourage and inspire you to be better at what you do serving students and adults. I am Brent Coley, your host and elementary principal in Southern California, and joining me today is another elementary principal, Mark French. Mark, how are you today? I'm, I'm great. great. I'm happy to join you from Minnesota, where it's actually snowing again on April 8th. Oh, my goodness. Mark, I I hesitate to even say what it is out here right now. It is a, a balmy 70, I think it was about 75 degrees today. Well, we might hit that sometime in July. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I lived in uh, Eden Prairie, Minnesota for about three months when I was 21. So not sure how far you are from Eden Prairie. At Eden Prairie is across the road from my school district. I'm actually off of Eden Prairie Road. Really? Yes. Yeah. Very, very close to where I used to live. So yes. what a small world. Well, Mark, again, um, I'm excited to chat with you. I'm excited for, for anybody listening to hear what you're going to share today. For anyone who is not already familiar with you and your work, not following you on Twitter, at Principal French, let everyone know who is Dr. Mark French. I am a 36-year experienced educator in my 21st year as an elementary principal. It was the right and perfect career for me. I love being an elementary principal. I tell students and families and anyone who will listen because I get to interact with so many different people on so many different levels. Students, staff members, parents, district colleagues, colleagues across the state and country. And it's been a good match for me and my skills. I'm actually in my second year in a newer district to me. Hmm. I am a principal at Gatewood Elementary. We have about 500 pre-K through grade six students as part of the Hopkins, Minnesota Public Schools. I made a change two years ago to the school district in which I live and vote and pay taxes. Hmm. And now I can be a, a advocate and champion for our schools in my own neighborhood. So I have enjoyed all of my years in education. I started in Houston, Texas as a teacher, came back to the Twin Cities area, have worked in the St. Paul Public Schools, the Osseo area schools, did a little stint for a couple of years at the Blake School, a private school system. Uh, so I'm actually at the end of my career. I have about three years left before. I'm considering retiring, and it's an interesting place to be, but because of some of the things I hope to share and the connections I've made through Twitter and other social media, I feel more energized and enthused now in my career than I did early on. No, and I would, I would totally agree with that. I mean, heck, you and I, We've never met in person. I have followed you online on Twitter and learned from you there. And now we're having a conversation halfway across the country. And I agree. Yeah, Twitter, other social media, when educators get there and share, it is such an energizing, um, an energizing force. So, uh, again, I always say, I say this on frequent episodes. If you guys are not on Twitter, if you have not tapped into that, you have got to do that because it is a gold mine of just picture the best educators in the world coming together and freely sharing resources. And it's free. And, and another thing that I've been able to do with Twitter and connections that I've made is to meet some Twitter friends and other educators face to face. I actually had the chance couple of weeks ago in spring break, I went to Michigan to spend time with some family members and connected with two principals in Michigan that I follow on Twitter. It, it's just great to be able to follow each other online and learn that way. But when you can connect in person, that is powerful. Oh, that, that is the best when you go to a conference and see somebody 
face to face that you feel like you've, I mean, I, I don't remember who tweeted it, but someone said that, that Twitter basically takes that relationship where the first time you meet, it goes from a handshake into a hug. Yes. You, you just, it's incredible. So that's not what we were, that's not what we're going to chat about tonight. That's a little a caveat on the side, but it's definitely worth noting. But what I talked to you before we started recording and we kind of messaged back and forth is one of the things that, that I have really admired about your work and what you do at your school and the experience that you have with building school culture. I mean, as, as I mean, I've not been doing it. This is, I'm finishing up year five as, as an elementary principal, um, 15 years in the classroom before moving into administration. So done it long enough to know that if you don't have, have culture, you don't have anything. That is the the bedrock upon which a school and learning happens. And if you don't have that, you're spinning your wheels on so many of the other initiatives. I mean, would you agree with would you agree with that? I would. I and you know, people might think and wonder about culture and climate and feeling and just the experience in a school, but I try to think about what actions can I take that will highlight or recognize or contribute to a positive feeling, a positive message, a positive experience for the students, families, and staff members. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is important, and that is a key responsibility of our role as an educator. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as the, as the leader of the school, it's like we're the captain of that ship in terms of the, the SS positivity, so to speak. So what? So I know some of the things that I have seen you tweet about. What are some of the things that you intentionally try to do with your students and your staff and your community? Um, what, what, kind of, what kind of stories do you have to share in terms of like what you do there? Well, one thing that I started a few years ago, uh, and I called it, and still do call it, the good news call of the day. And a few summers ago, I was in a Twitter chat and was impressed by a teacher who said that she made one positive phone call for one of her students every day. And I thought, that is very impressive. And I also thought, I've got 500 kids in my building. I can certainly find one person worthy each day of a positive phone call. So that's how it was started by wanting to recognize the positive. Um, yes. Do we have challenging students in our school? Absolutely. Do we have kids that we need to continue to support and strengthen relationships and find ways to help them be better? Yes, but we also have the majority of kids in our school who are doing a great job every day. So my practice is I think about the student who I am going to make the good news call of the day. I go down to their classroom. I stop the class and explain to the teacher why I'm there and why I selected that student. I bring them down to my office tell them why I'm calling, what our purpose is. I give them our wristband, good news call of the day, and just surprise call their family members. And people ask me, well, how do you select? And how do you pick? And what do you do? And in my school, most of the students are identified by me. I do sometimes have staff members who will recommend a student, but it's also powerful when I, as the principal, call a parent as I did the other day and say, you know, I saw your son do this very simple, kind thing in the cafeteria. And that's why I'm calling with the good news call of the day today. Yeah. And what, cause I have, I have started doing that and I want to thank you and the other, <laughs> other school leaders who have picked up on this. And, and you mentioned the wristband. I talked about this in, in one of the previous episodes where, I saw on Twitter that, and I've gotten those wristbands made too, that kids basically wear as a, as a badge of honor. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Um, what I have found in doing that is you kind of touched on, yes, we have 
challenges that we have to go <laughs> that we have to confront and students who sometimes sometimes let's we have to make those phone calls for the less than positive reason and what i have found one of the things that the good news call of the day that we're trying to get that is that parents are when mr coley calls when mr french calls they don't they're not expecting oh geez the principal's calling i wanted to get to the point where they're ooh. Is this the good news? Am I getting the good news call of the day type thing? I mean, what what has been your experience? Can you give me an example or two of of a parent? Because uh, for me, I don't know who gets more out of those types of calls: the student, the parent, or myself. I mean, I almost think it's a three way tie. I think you're exactly right, and that that's the beauty of it. And it is so simple. It's a phone call. Now. I also take a selfie with the student. I share that on social media. I watch other principals around the country use that same hashtag good news call of the day, and they've made it their own. There's somebody, a principal in Illinois, who rings a gong. There's a principal, I think, in Alabama who dresses up in funny hats with the student. People are making it their own, and that is also fun to see. But I remember when I started this of calling a parent and they started to cry. Mm -hmm. And they said, this is the first time I've heard anything positive about my child. Uh, and that has stuck with me. And you can hear the joy in parents' voices. I used to play the hi this is mr french the principal calling your child is in the office with me pause <laughs> for a good reason and i decided no i don't want to scare the parents they're probably already seen mr french's or the school's name pop up but i what i say it'll sound just like i'm calling hi this is principal french from gatewood do you have time for some good news because i want to to start out and not let them worry. Um, but the good news call of the day also has gone to students who have shown growth mm -hmm. and improvement. So they may have been struggling or had it, having a challenging period, but they buckled down and dug deep inside. So those calls are great to make as well when you can show growth and improvement or highlight a special kind act or just to talk about how your child is generally friend friendly. They smile, they greet, they hold doors open. That's what we want to recognize. And sometimes people have challenged me by, well, everything isn't positive. I get that, but I can do this one small thing every day to recognize that and acknowledge most of the students in our school are doing the right thing and good things every day. And shouldn't we recognize that? And I would, gosh, I would absolutely 100% echo that. And for, for someone saying, well, not everything's positive. Well, of course not everything is positive, but you can find something positive in everybody. And what I have found to be the most, I'll use the word effective, but is when I make that call for the student who I may have had to make a negative call before. And I like how you, I have gone to when you said, this is what my calls sound like. I've had to do the same type of thing because I used to call say, hey, this is Mr. Coley from Ultima Yoretta. How are you today? Pause, waiting for a response, which would usually be like, uh fine until mr coley from alta murrieta called <laughs> and and i've now had to move it to hey this is mr coley how are you today you're getting my good news call of the day like i don't even give them a chance i don't even take a breath because i want their heart to start beating again <laughs> right right yeah that the dramatic effect i thought ha ha that's going to be funny no i had to change that quickly because yeah. I want it to be about the student and yeah. not a surprise factor. Yeah. Well, and I think that um, 
you mentioned the parent crying. I have, I would say, and I have not done it. I mean, I'm newer to the game. Um, have not been doing it nearly as long as you, but I would venture to say 40 or 50% of the time that I call, I hear either thick emotion on the other end or straight up tears. And, and I think it's just, I just have to think that as a, as a parent, as a parent of two myself, if I were to get that call, that would buoy me for the rest of the day, if not the rest of the week. And I'm thinking those kids who do struggle more with behavior or effort or whatever it is, if you make that call, I mean, because I've had the kids, when I gave them that wristband, I've mentioned this in a previous episode, the very first one I got, when I first got the, the, the wristbands, and this is worth mentioning again, it was a second grade student. And we called mom and I gave him the wristband and he put it on and he held it up and he looked at me and he said, I'm never going to take this off. Wow. And, and the second, I had another one who said, boy, if I hadn't, if I hadn't opened that door for that staff member, I wouldn't be holding one of these. It's a little rubber wristband that costs like 50 cents, but to a second grader, and actually it was a fifth grader who, who, who said, I wouldn't be having one of these if I didn't do that good thing. That's a 10 year old who is still, it, it means that much to them. Right. The, the first, I'm in my third year of making my good news call of the day. The first year I made 130 calls. And I say I made 130 calls for 130 different students. Sometimes I call two parents. Mm. And the second year, I made calls for 135 different students. This year, I'm on track to hit about 140. I don't repeat students in a given year because I want to spread it out. Yeah. Um, but another thing that I have done, certainly not enough or as often, is I have made a good news call of the day for staff members who work in school. And... <laughs> talk about emotional mm -hmm. uh, one of the last ones i made was for a third grade teacher i could not even explain to her husband why i was calling and the reasons because i was crying so much mm. and then she was crying and he was crying but i need to step up my game to spread that part of the culture in our building because some of these staff members who have worked for years have never had anyone call their spouse, their children, their parents. So I need to step up my game on making a good news call of the day more often for staff members. And I'm and I'm I'm glad you said that because I I I had uh, chatted with Joe San Filippo, who had talked who had talked about that, and as soon as I was done. With that conversation the next day, I, I've done that to a couple, and I'm glad that you brought that up again because it's it's reminding me that I need to do more of that. But um, I, the very first one I did, it, um, her husband, my staff member's husband is a firefighter, so he was off, and I had to leave a message, which I almost think is better because I left a message and just said, like, I just want to tell you how fantastic – Kathy is she is just uh, and just extolled her virtues and the next morning she came into my office tears and basically said it was my daughter's birthday yesterday we were out at dinner and my husband hadn't told me about your call and played the call at the table in the restaurant put it on speaker for the whole family to hear wow and and just and she just you could just see it on her face what a difference it made and going back to the beginning of our conversation, you said, it's so doggone easy to do. It's a phone. It's, it's a phone call. I know. I know. It is an easy thing. We um, Another easy thing that I have incorporated into my school for the last couple of years, and I started it as at a previous school, and many people do that. We just call ours the citizen of the month. Mm. Again, it's this idea that we have so many kids out there doing so many good things. So our practice is 
I create a Google Doc. I ask teachers, identify the name of a student from your class to be this month's citizen of the month and give me a couple sentence description of why. Then I gather all of those citizens. I take their photos. I create a wall display that has the student's photo and the reason why. And for a month, then we honor that month's citizens of the month, all the way from our pre-K classrooms through our sixth grade classrooms. And then on a given Friday during the month, we invite family members in to have a celebration of these amazing students. And when I first did it and invited family members, I didn't know how many family members would come in. But I fill our cafeteria. We have about 24 students. In fact, I know there's 24 students because I just put their pictures up on the wall today um, mm -hmm. for uh, this month's citizens. And we will fill the cafeteria because not only mom and dad will come, they bring siblings and grandparents and other relatives. It, it's a simple yet powerful way, again, to recognize the accomplishments and the good works of our students. And we're trying this year, our school-wide theme is kind, keep it nice daily. And we're using that through our words and practices and we're trying to connect that our citizens of the month have somehow modeled and demonstrated what being kind or modeling keep it nice daily means. That's awesome. No, I, I love that idea of, of inviting, um, inviting family to, to, to honor and recognize. We do monthly awards, uh, same type of thing. It's not as, it's, we have varying different awards that each, each teacher can can nominate students for and, and we invite parents to that and it's 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 awesome and again even all the way up not just talking like kindergarten first grade all the way up to fifth grade these I mean it means it means something to them it means a whole lot and in fact each time we do it each monthly celebration not all of our family members or parents can make it in mm -hmm. and there are one or two students who's parents aren't able to come or make it. I try to find staff members who can come in and be the guest for that student. Uh, I try to make it special by taking a selfie with that student and sending it to their family to show them. Um, but yeah, it, it it's so powerful that I've watched children see all the other families there and if their family couldn't be there they're feeling a little bit let down so i have to continue to think about how to respond to that yeah no that's just the fact that you're thinking about something like that and and wanting to make sure that nobody feels is feels left out is is fantastic we've um i was thinking as you were talking about your staff and how you're getting your staff involved our theme, and I love your kind, keep it nice daily. I love that acronym. Um, our theme is pursue, our motto is pursuing excellence. So we've started a, I started a pursuer of excellence award and every month at our monthly staff meeting, we have th three, three staff members. There's we have three awards and the staff members give it to another staff member, which I think is a nice way of, so if one of our, teachers has it the next month they nominate another teacher and they get an opportunity to kind of stand up and basically recognize um, one of their colleagues who is pursuing excellence, who is taking risks, who is stepping outside of their comfort zone to do what's best for students. Because I think what you said earlier is so, so, so true that so many of our teachers or classified staff, because we include them as well, they don't hear it enough. They just, they, they're doing amazing things for kids and nobody know, know, outside of the administrator who comes in and sees it, nobody else notices. You are so spot on with that. I, I have a lot of conversations with people that I evaluate and supervise mm -hmm. uh, because that's part of our role. 
you know, we supervise and the probationary teachers, we supervise a portion of our licensed staff members, our tenured folks. And I recognize that a lot. I, I tell staff members when I'm talking about the great things that they're doing, the special things that they do. And here's something that comes out of my mouth a lot. It's like, I know you're looking at me and thinking, why is he telling me that? That just seems so hmm. basic. Doesn't everybody do that? And I have to say, no, no, they don't. They and don't. You don't know that because you don't get to go around and see everyone like I do. Yeah. You and I, we have this perspective where we get to see the greatness in our building. And there are some things people do that are so special, sometimes so simple, but they don't realize that it is special and unique. And you are right, we've got to find ways to bring that out. I started this year a my Grateful Gator Award. We're the Gatewood Gators. Mm -hmm. So I found an art piece of a metallic gator, and my goal is every couple weeks, I take the Grateful Gator and go present it to a different staff member, just thanking them. I noticed this about you, you're present, you're visible, you're helpful, you do this. So I've been handing out the Grateful Gator Award this year, but my goal next year, like you mentioned, is to start it off with one person and then have that person pass it on to the next and then the next so that they're hearing things from their colleagues. I know they expect, and they definitely want to hear from we leaders. Mm -hmm. They want praise. Uh, so an interesting thing about culture is I found that people want private praise. I don't know if, if you have discovered that as well. The public, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the public display sometimes makes some people uncomfortable, but those individual email messages, visits, note cards, that means a whole lot to folks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. One of the things like those little postcards and post-its is, I mean, the bl I call it the blinking red light of death on my work phone. Because <laughs> when you come into your office this morning and the light's blinking, you're thinking, oh boy, like, I've got a complaint waiting for me or something like that. And I thought the other day, I thought, how could that? So what I did is I called a couple teachers and I, this was not an original idea. Somebody had given me this idea. So I want to don't want to take credit for this, but I called a couple teachers. I was there late. So I knew that they were gone and I left a message saying, you're awesome. So that when they came in in the morning and they saw their light blinking and they're thinking, oh, geez, parents got to complain or something like that, it's going to flip the, flip the script on them and they're going to have a nice word of encouragement to start their day. Again, totally easy, but the teachers have been like, thank you, Brent. That, like, that started my day on such a positive uh, note. So for anybody listening, that is such an easy thing to do. Is And it doesn't have you don't have to be a principal. You can no. be a teacher. Call I call. think I like that idea of starting the day and – I've seen other people, this is not part of my practice yet, but I've heard of other leaders who try to send out two positive email messages every day. And you could certainly make it an email message or a voicemail message, but what a nice way to start things out. You, you're describing it so well. I think the same thing. Okay, I've got a message. <laughs> What is somebody unhappy about? What am I going to have to help with? But yeah. wouldn't yeah. it be great if it's the first email message you read is this positive, encouraging note, or the first thing you hear is how great you're doing? Yeah, yeah. And that's that was the goal. It's this because, gosh, teachers have such a hard job, especially now. We're getting ready to end of the year. State testing is coming, and it's just we just need to do more of that to, to help them along the way. So. Well, Mark, I will, uh, I am, this was great. I really, I mean, I am encouraged talking to you and you have encouraged me to be more on top of my good news calls of the day. 
Um, cause I, I have started that, but I'll be honest when things get busy, I have let that lap lapse a little bit. So I need to get back into that. And I thank you. Thank you for that. Cause it, it, it's so important. It's so, yeah. I, I've seen the benefits. It's too important to let lapse. So you're right. It's an odd feeling. I have talked to people about it. I've even written about it when I am so busy and multiple things are happening and I don't get to make my good news call of the day. I leave school with this blah feeling mm -hmm. like I missed something. I didn't get to do something and having that positive call and connection with the student and family. I miss when I don't get to do that. And that will just put exclamation point on that i mean that that's just perfect when we when we don't do it we miss out not right. just the kids miss out not just the students we as teachers we as administrators me as as school leaders we miss out so we just got to do it so well mark thank you again and for anybody who is not already following you how can somebody connect with you online i love being connected on twitter and we can connect that way, I'm at Principal French on Twitter, and we'll learn from each other there. Fantastic. Yeah, and, and for anyone listening, again, he is a fantastic follow. Yeah, you're, you will be encouraged, inspired, and learn uh, from Mark. So if you're not already following him, definitely get on the, on the Twitters and uh, give him a follow. So, Mark, thank you again. Uh, we're recording on a Sunday. Have a great Monday. Hopefully there's no blinking red messages of death waiting for you. Hopefully there are positive, positive calls waiting. And for everybody listening, thank you for listening. Thank you for the support, the encouragement. Um, if you haven't already done so, as I say every episode, subscribe. You can find us in iTunes, Google Play. We're in Spotify now as well. And until next time, have a good one.